Hi, this is Francisco Pulgar Vidal with FKI Quality. Today I would like to speak with you about the fact that histograms, although a great tool for representing data, cannot tell the behavior of a variable. His histograms can be used to show, for instance, the spread of values. Here we have one histogram. It is primarily a sequence of marks made to indicate when a variable took a certain value. So if this, value, if this variable at one point in time had the value of one, we give it one little mark, one x. If the variable then took the value of two, which would be the next tick mark, twice, then we give it another two more, two more marks. If the variable had a value of 10, another mark, and so on and so forth. So the type of thing that you can see on a histogram, for instance, would be the range of a variable. In this case, we can see how the variable goes all the way from one to 15 and values in between. And you could say, well, this is what we call the range of the variable. What else can we see on a histogram? For instance, you could easily see how there is one of these values that happens much more often. That's what we call the mode. And so this number five is what you may call the mode of the distribution, just a value that happens most often. And you may also say, uh, see here that uh, although there is a certain uh, a clustering of numbers around here, there also seems to be a little bit of some, some, some odd grouping around here. So maybe you may want to call those outliers or just some other type of numbers. Now, having said this, what the histogram cannot tell us is how the numbers happened. That is, were they trending as they were happening? Were they trending towards larger numbers? For instance, did we have first the numbers on the left side and then they slowly happen to grow and until we got the numbers on the right side? It's a possibility, but the histogram by itself cannot tell us that. Can we see, for instance, whether or not the values happen in a rather random form? Uh, possibly, but we cannot tell that. We cannot really tell from here which numbers happened first and which ones happened next and which was the first value and which one was the last value. Or we also cannot tell from this diagram if the numbers started maybe just in one area, perhaps towards the center, and then they started jumping to the right and to the left, to smaller and to larger values. A distribution, a histogram rather, made of values with the three different behaviors that I just told you would look exactly the same. So what can we do about the behavior of the variable, which actually is what matters, because it may give us the ability to predict what's going to happen in the future? Well, the behavior of a variable over time can only be shown on something called a run chart. A run chart shows the behavior of one variable over time. Let's say that we have a variable here that we will call x, and this variable could take on different values. Let's say the values are in time order, 52, then uh, 55, 54, and 58. Let's just take these four values. How would they look like in a run chart? Well, the first value corresponds to 52, and so that would be an observation here. The second value, 55, would be charted here. The third one in the third position along the horizontal axis. And finally, the fourth one on the fourth position along this same axis. And so really what we see here is that the variable started here, then took on this value, then went down by one, and then went up by four more units. And so in this way, the run chart is telling us how the variable took on different values over time, and we can see its behavior. So for instance, we may be able to see how a variable changes in an orderly way from smaller values to larger values. We may also be able to see how, over a certain period of time, the variable actually took on random values without apparent uh, rhyme or reason, one behind the other. It's also possible 
that these values, they seem to be very stable at first. And then it seems like an earthquake came around and they started jumping to high values and low values. So none of these behaviors is clearly evident in, or evident at all, really, in a histogram. A histogram can, marry, can very well hide the actual behavior of a variable. And we will never know if it was growing, random, or a jumpy variable. Only the run chart can tell us these type of behaviors. Therefore, let's get into the habit of using run charts and to show our variables, the behavior of our important variables, over time, so that we may see how they go about over a certain period of time. But in order to do this, you must also get in the habit first of always time stamping your data. That is to know the chronology or the sequence in which these data happen to be. In the next video, we'll learn how to represent this variability on what you may call the bigger brother of a run chart, which is what we're going to call the control chart. Thank you for your time.